Well, hi, and thanks for joining me here in my shop. Before we get going on the next item, which is, I think, going to be pretty interesting, I just wanted to talk a bit about this, this uh, product here. And the reason I want to talk about this is because somebody put a comment on one of my videos that they thought they saw that this contained sulfuric acid. Now, what I did with this in the last uh, video is I used it to polish some silver contacts that are found in a dual head shell from the 1000 series dual turntables. And anybody who does this kind of stuff with any regularity knows what I'm talking about. These rather large contacts. And you would have seen it in the last video. So that got my curiosity when uh, he said that I see that this is um, sulfuric acid because frankly I used it without really knowing what it was. And now I know why I don't know what it was. It actually doesn't say anywhere what this is. Extra mild polish for very finest sterling silver plate or gold. That doesn't help you too much. Shows you how to use it. Explains what tarnish is caused by. And then it says contains no strong abrasives, chemicals, or offensive odor and will not cake. Cares about the cake. Absolutely safe. Haggerty's is made according to an old silversmith's formula of the best ingredients obtainable. Haggerty's is mild, will not affect your hands, or damage factory oxidation or French gray work, whatever that is. Uh, made in Toronto. So, I mean, I, this could have been in our house for 20 years for all I know. I, I don't know where it came from. Um, obviously, we've used some in the past. I just don't know what the background is on this. So, maybe you can't even buy this stuff. I have no idea. But anyway, looks like no sulfuric acid in here. You certainly want to be aware of the nature of the chemicals you use when you're doing this kind of stuff. So, okay, how about the next thing? Here comes the next thing. And it is very heavy. It's a real heavy guy here. Okay, what in heaven's name is this? Okay, as is typical in my uh, shop work here in my videos, I have not even opened this. I don't even know what's inside it. I think it's a turntable. I'd be stunned if it's not. <laughs> if it's not, we're in trouble from the start here. Let's put it this way. So, so let's check it out and see what's up with it. Um, you know, funny arrangement of clips here. They're not, they're not balanced. Okay. Very odd. Oh! Look at that opening. I got this upside down or something? No. Feet are down here. Am I not figuring out where the front is? Oh, oh my gosh, check this out. This is, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Here's the front. <clears throat> it's very heavy. It must have a huge motor in it or something. Oh boy, look at this. Check this out. Let me see if I can get this right off here. Wow, this is like an industrial quality record player or something. Let's not put this in too quick. Operating instructions. Okay, microphone operation. What? Microphone operation. Small print. I'll have to read this after. Very good though. What's this made by? It's made by. What is that? New. Oh, new comb. New comb. Hmm. New Com B or something. Wow. Isn't that the coolest looking thing? What is going on here with this? What's all this? Hmm. And check out the controls down here. Holy smokes. Wow. Mic 3, Mic 2, Mic 1. Scratch filter, auxiliary input, external amplifier. It looks like it might be a left and a right here. Uh, speakers, 8 ohms or 4 ohms. Speaker outlets here. 
There's the fuse. Wow. Power. Uh, what is this? Normal. Minimum. All. Maybe this must be a, like a master volume. And oddly enough, it says minimum over here, like it's backwards or something. <laughs> That's interesting. Radio? What? Radio, phono, mic. Bass. What is going on here? So there's radio, phono, mic. I'll bring this area. <laughs> this is pretty confusing. Treble, bass, this isn't confusing, I just follow these. Treble, bass, volume, 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 bass. What? <laughs> this is, what is this machine here? Well, it's got a uh, serial number tag in the back here. There's a speed control here. 16 all the way to 78. A little bit scratched up. I don't think this has been used very much. Look at that. Platter spins nicely. Wow. Here's a control here. 78 and LP. Isn't that different? What, what in heaven's name is that doing? It's changing the... Uh, I'll show you on the other camera here. Let's see. It's changing the spring pressure of the uh, spring in here that controls the weight of this arm. Yeah, it's definitely, it's lighter. Yeah, definitely. Lighter on the LP side. What's this thing? Push and turn. Oh, you gotta get a close-up of this. You gotta get a close-up of this, this action. Give me one second here. And I'll switch over there. I'm just gonna refocus the camera so it can do a close-up. Go. Now, let's see if I can hold this with my hand here. Okay, now watch. When I push the, this button that's up on top here, okay, which says push to turn. L, it's at the LP right now. It's a little hard for me to do this with one hand. Let's see if I can. Push it. Uh, hard to push it, apparently. Push it. See the whole needle come out? And then it's supposed to turn. Okay, a little hard for me to do this with one hand. Wait one second here. Let's get this just a little more. Perfect. Almost perfect. There we go. Now I got two hands on the lever here. So that's LP, and then you push and turn, huh. and then let in the other needle. Isn't that something? Is there a needle there? Let's turn it around again. Wow. Well, I really hope this cartridge is working because uh, it'd be a shame that, uh, to have to sacrifice this thing because it's so cool. I mean, this is really pretty, uh, pretty different. Wow. It says VR2 on there. VR2. Looks like a standard cartridge. Uh, right over here is the lock screw. You can lock it down so it can't fly around while you're Carrying this from what? One party to another? You wouldn't take this to a party. What the? This is like something you'd find in a school gymnasium or something like that, I'd say. Cool stuff. Very, very cool stuff here. Okay, so I'm going to lock that in now that I know how to do it. Some other interesting stuff here. Let me just change the focus again on my uh, other camera here. So this this is definitely industrial quality stuff. I mean we can't 
can't imagine it to be anything less than that. Okay, we'll take a closer look at the whole, the whole shebang here. So we'll start up here. 130 watts. That's a lot of power for something like this. Hollywood. Made in USA. Now check this out. What the heck is this? Adjust tempo control until the dots appear stationary. So there's a, something to look into here. Oh yeah, I can see some dots in there. I don't know if you can see them. You see them in there? So there must be a neon bulb or something flashing in this area to, uh, to light this up. Maybe using the 60 cycle power, I don't know. Here's a little red light here. It looks like a red light. There's another one over here. So I don't know if those are red lights or what they are. What's going on with this screw here? Don't know why that would be like that. That's an unusual screw. The head of it is a little bit unusual. You can see how the slot actually doesn't go all the way across. I don't, don't know what that is, but the normal retaining... Oh, here's another one over here. Hey, it's a loose too. Isn't that, that's odd there, eh? Because the hold down screws look, look more like this. Oh look, there's a piano hinge at the back here. So this thing is designed to be flipped up. Oh, so these are probably just locking things, you know. They just kind of lock it down. I don't feel like they're engaging with anything, though. So I bet you this thing's ready to flip up. Oh my gosh. Yes, it is. Okay, figuring stuff out here one step at a time. Now up here we've got the... Here's the on-off control, oddly enough, stuck way back here. And tempo control. And this is slow and fast on it, so that's just a fine adjustment in the speed. Uh, I doubt this is an automatic turntable. Doesn't, doesn't strike me as the back thing here is pretty wobbly. You think that should be a little solider than that? More, a little more solid. What's this? What's this pillar here? Is that what they did to keep this from going too far? They put a pillar there. That's a dumb arrangement. The uh, torque forces here are huge. I mean, I got a lever here. I can break that. That's probably why this has come loose. Um, and look where the the uh, the needle gets all oh, 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 oh. the needle gets all the way to the middle here. So I don't know what that is. I keep you from playing it backwards, I guess. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Okay, so let's take a look down here again. Hmm. Speaker outlets. I think I've only got one speaker plug like that. Look, there's two outlets. So this is a stereo player. Wow. What year would this be from? Tape. Radio tape auxiliary. Anything phono, external amp, external amp, that's an output. So all must mean, must be a switch here, maybe you switch from all the inputs, which are all those microphones, or the phono, and send it here, and out it goes to some external amp, I don't really know, for sure yet. How come they got this on red, they got this button a red color, and this one black, this one's just a scratch filter. I wonder why they would color it red. Phono Mic 3 selector. So it looks like you get uh, your choice of Mic 3 or Phono, but not both. Oh, I get it now. Okay, so here's the Mic 1 control here. What's that? Music and voice. What? This must be like a tone control. Tone control, and this must be the volume, off and maximum for mic 1. And mic 2 has a volume, no tone control or whatever this thing is. 
And then mic 3, which is in this group, is radio, phono, mic 3. So you're only, only going to get a radio, a phono, or a mic 3 and going through this volume. Off max, normal max. I don't know. I, I'm not figuring that out 100%. I think we'll figure it out as we start using this thing. Wow. Hey, let's uh, let's pop it. Let's pop it open. You know, yeah, if you put a uh, 33 with a small hole, it just pushes the 45 ring down out of the way. If you put a 45 with a larger hole, this ring will support that record. Okay, this is certainly a lot different from all the usual record players that I see. I'll flip this up now. Let's see what we got here. Oh. oh, it's got a little locky thing here. I really want to swing this further open though. Yeah, the wires don't reach. That's on a plug. Let's pull the plug out. That's not the easiest thing. And I've taken this holder off. Kind of made a mistake here. Let me put it back on. Okay. I don't like these things because they tend to drop on me. <laughs> Let's see if I can get that plug out of the back there. there. And that's not enough for it to stay up on its own. So I'm going to have to prop it with something. So let's take a look here. What do we got going? Okay, so checking out the top. Motor. Look at this huge disc here. And what is this? Gosh, you know what I think that is? Now this is the the uh, speed adjustment. I think I think this is an electromagnetic brake. And you're basically sliding two poles of something here. Let me get a closer look at it. Give you a closer look at it here. Unfortunately, I got to hold this hold this up. Should really take care of that first. Let, let me take care of propping this up first, and then we'll take another look at it here. Just... Oops, okay, so that was easy to do. I just put this stick in here and just wedged it in. Whoa! I thought I had it wedged in so it couldn't move. <laughs> Better to find out now than a few minutes from now. There we are. Okay, so that's that's not going anywhere now. So we'll get back to our uh, close-up examination here. So I was talking about this plate. Oh, what just fell? Could have sworn I heard something fall there. Maybe it went right down through the grill, whatever it was. But uh, anyway, see, there's clearance between that. And when I turn the control, all it does is rotate that piece. Let me hold still here. So I think what this is doing is, I'm going to guess this is magnetic, why guess, why don't we check it, yeah, it's a pretty strong magnet in there, so this magnet causes an effect in this rotating plate, generates electricity in the plate, and that generation of electricity and the resistance of the plate and all this kind of stuff ends up 
applying a, a drag on the plate. A very, very precise control, I would think, as you turn this, this control, even though it's the clumsiest mechanical thing you've ever seen. I think you could achieve very, very good control this way. <laughs> okay. What else do we see? I see some funny stuff here. That's dried. Ooh, that's dried uh, lubrication of various sorts, so... It spins, but... It doesn't uh, doesn't spin freely. It's not terrible, but so the reason for the slow speed could easily be just the adjustment of this control. But I, I can't imagine somebody be fooled by that. It's pretty clear up above what it does. Now, what about the big speed and the main speed control? Here's the main speed control. Okay, so you can see a lever back in there. Looks like the mechanism is, is up above though. Yeah, you can see the uh, that's the idler going up and down. So it's probably got a shaft on the motor with varying diameters and you're just running the idle wheel up and down against them. Let's see if we can kind of see in here. A little bit. Well, we'll have to get this platter off, that's for sure. Now, hey, what is this? What the heck is this thing? This is where they would hide the gold for sure. It's a little tiny hole back here. Ah, you just hide the power cord in there. Man, I thought for sure I found the hidden gold bar for once, but no. <laughs> okay, so it looks pretty clean inside here actually. So there's the power supply. That's got to be the rectifier tube there. And then we've got two 12AX7s, six AN8, and then uh, what is, the, oh, one, two, three, four, what's going on here? We've got six V6 output tubes. Well, yeah, that's a six V6. Can see it on the side of the tube. And uh, what's that? Somebody show me a tube number on there. Six V six. So four six V sixes. So I'm gonna guess these are in push pull in a left and right channel. Um, this is probably an output transformer, but there's only one of them. So I'm a little curious about what that is. Because back there is the power supply transformer. That's what's given this thing such weight. When you pick it up, that mo that uh, transformer, this motor, this it's all that's where the weight's coming from. Well, it's quite a beast. I'd have to look up six A and eight. I know a twelve AX seven or two triodes. Oh, check it out! Ha 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 ha! Fantastic. There's the model number too. See down there, right at the bottom, Newcom, Newcom Audio Products Company. Never heard of it. So this was a specialty company making specialty products. Probably, I'm going to guess, this would wind up in a school. Oh, so those are light bulbs there. They, they go with that little, those little red, little red indicators. Why, why two light bulbs? two indicators. Why would that be? Well, we'll probably have to operate it to find that out. Now look at this connection here. How's this work? This is coming back from the cartridge. So, well, I imagine it's just a ground wire and then this is probably a shielded wire. 
Let's see, can you see that? Let's go a little closer with the camera here. I'm going to take a good look at this wire. Because all indications are that this is a stereo machine. Uh, it doesn't look like a stereo thing coming down from the cartridge. Sorry for the shakiness here. Well, you can definitely see it's just one wire and a shield. So, how do you get stereo out of that? If I look at the cartridge, I think we can just get a look at it here. Get a little peek at it. It's just a mono cartridge. I mean, look at the age of this thing. That's kind of weird. That's got these two speaker outputs. It doesn't have the word stereo anywhere on it. So I would think uh, if it had stereo, it would have it listed all over it everywhere. Look at the speaker switch again. One or four speakers. Two speakers. One or four speakers on one side of the switch. Two speakers on the other. Eight and four ohms. <laughs> that's a little bit of a mystery to me too, but uh, that's the fun of it. That's what we're here for, here to find the mysteries. Let's find the mysteries here. I really get a kick out of seeing stuff I've never seen before. Well, the question would be, should we turn this guy on and should we turn him on like this? Well, I can't turn him on this propped up because I can't, I can't get the plug in. So I have to plug him back in. I should put him down, turn him on, see what happens. i got to have a speaker hooked up, though. Okay, so I think I have one of these plugs somewhere. So it says, it says one or four speakers, so what the heck. We'll put one speaker in here. And uh, we'll try it out. So let me, let me get that set up here. Okay, so my search for one of these connectors has been fruitless. So I'll find it in here at some point, but not right now. So we'll close this guy up. locked down but it kind of sticks in there. And we'll flip this up on its side here. Back has a handle. Clips. Uh, looks like this way. There we go. Hey. Well let's take this off. Lots of screws here. 